How's it going, my fellow Cuffishians? This is Cause Legion Code speaking, and welcome to the next five minute review, more or less, of the game called Regalia of Men and Monarchs. This is a RPG style type of game, uh, turn based mainly, released May 18, 2017, so two years ago. Developer Pixelated Milk and Publisher by Club Bader. You run around as your main character, you, you go do quests, and when you go into a fight, it's your team's turn, and then the enemy's team's turn, and then your team's turn, and stuff like that. But in this game, obviously, when it comes to a turn base, it just depends on who is faster that will end up going first. So for instance, uh, if you can get up to four heroes that you can use in the game. So if two of your team members are fast, but the other two are slow, then most likely you'll end up going first with your two fast team, and then the enemy will shoot first and second until, you know, whenever the next one is slower than your character, and then your slowest characters will come up next. A little bit confusing, I guess you could say, but basically the faster you are, the faster you, you are it's your turn into the game, which is pretty cool. It also has RPG styles, so instead of leveling up um, individual characters like you would in a normal, I guess I can say, turn-based game, in this case, you actually level up your entire party. So it doesn't matter if you get a new hero along the line when you were level 10, and then you got one um, when you were now 15. All of your characters will still be level 15 since it is a team-based level up and not single place. Um, you have like, ugh, I, I want to say like over 10, 10 to 15 heroes that you can actually choose. Um, the ones that you choose are the other three. So um, you have to keep your main character that you start in the game and then you can choose a different another five team members to go along with you and then in an actual battle um, you can only choose four so you always have two two to spare um, there's also um, there's also cutscenes some of them are uh, voice acted some of them are not uh, it also has like uh, reading reading quests so it would be like sort of like a mini book that you need to read and you can choose the options and if you I guess you can say if you choose correctly you'll get more XP or more coins for that mission versus um, other times when you end up failing and um, don't know what else they got when it comes to the game in itself so let me go ahead to my notes um, you can choose what kind of um, talent tree every individual hero has so if you happen to get a new one or you just want to keep using the old heroes that you were that you used from the beginning each one has their own talent tree so none of them are actually going to be the same so you know let's say your main character is is a melee with a gun and then your other characters are like a huge defense a magician archer um, uh, maybe a little bit of both or whatever um, each individual character will have their own tree so yeah a lot of them can be like okay we want 12% uh, speed on all of your characters but those in order to get that 12% speed you're gonna have to use like three slots of whatever it is that the game marks as your talents so you only have an X amount of talents before you can no longer choose things so that's pretty cool so you can choose to level up their spells or or their summons or their uh, physical uh, damage you know stuff like that which is pretty cool so there's also sort of like a city builder in attached to the game. So you have your town and basically the premise of the game is to um, make uh, bring up that town from the bottom to the top in order to pay off a debt 
and uh, you can build houses, you'll get resources from fighting uh, during quests. So you can build the house and then you can level up the house, so it'll go from level 1 to level 4 depending on you know the resources that you have or the amount of money that you have which is pretty cool and every single time you level up a resource um, a, a house should I say you'll gain um, higher items for it so let's say if you can if you have a blacksmith you can only make uncommon items and then when you level up to two then you can make uncommon items and then level three you can make epic items and stuff like that. And there's a lot of different um, buildings that you can make. Depending on what you actually end up choosing throughout the game, you'll only have certain buildings available. You won't actually have them all, or at least that's what happened to me. Same thing when it comes to heroes. So let's say there are up to 15 heroes that you can get. You actually won't get them all because you just don't have the ability to do that. But again, that's how my playthrough went. So... Um, when it comes to the towns themselves, you, there's people attached to it, so obviously. So you actually can gain relationship from every single party member that you have in that town, including your own heroes that you use in order to do quests with, which is pretty cool. So you know, they start from level 1 and they, go, they can go up to level 5. And you actually have to spend days because the game is marked as days in order to um, level them up. And um, considering that it's a town, you can actually level up like like over 30 different people in order to get whatever it is that you're looking for. So obviously every level up gains you extra stuff. So let's say if it's someone from the town, they they can increase the chances of you finding loot while doing quests. And then if you're doing heroes, then they'll have a higher chance of attacking or have a different ability that you can choose for their talent tree in order to you know increase defense or offense and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. And there's just so many, there's so much variety to the game. There isn't just turn-based quests where you have to go in and fight. Um, obviously, again, you can go back to um, quests where you just read something, and then when you are reading that book, there there is a chance that you can go into an enemy encounter and then have to fight them and then win extra loot or lose. Not really sure what happens if you end up losing, but um, when you're reading the when you're reading the certain quest, there is a chance where you can go into combat. And um, just in general, pretty it's a pretty huge open game considering it's also an indie game. Like there's just so much to do in the game. Um, in order for me to um, beat the game, it actually took me 38 hours, almost 39 hours to complete the entire game. But you have to keep in mind that, again, there is a ton of reading. There is a ton of different things that you, ha that you can do. And um, that's just what kind of stalled me, I guess you can say. So, you know, just messing around. So when it comes to the bad things, there isn't that many bad things per se, but there was one mission in general where I, like you can zoom out and zoom in into your battle flanks. There was only one mission that I noticed it where they, the game had like this big shadow thing, um, you know, I guess you can say blocking or in the camera's view. And so you can't see beyond. But there was one quest where you can go beyond the shadow so you can actually see the cutoff that they did, which is kind of funny and pretty dumb considering the fact that the game lets you zoom out so you would think that they would look, but there was some cutoff, which I thought was amazing. Um, there are skippable cutscenes that you can do in the game. But there was one instance where it was like a judge kind of quest where I had to decide uh, in which favor do I want to go to in order to complete the quest. And that quest in itself wasn't skippable. So there was like, let's say, 
uh, eight different dialogue boxes that I had to go through plus whatever every option I was choosing afterwards that I would have to go through in order to choose the next option and that particular instance I wasn't able to skip any of it so every single time I lost I had to just spam A until I finally was able to choose the option and then spam A until I was able to choose another option which was really stupid but again that was really the only instance where I needed where I wanted myself to skip cutscenes and I just couldn't which was kind of sucking and again for me there was just way too much reading like I love turn-based games, and the turn-based game it's usually when it comes to uh, obviously a lot of reading because you're gonna be running around through encounters, reading signs, reading uh, lore, whatever it is that you find on the ground or in the town. But there, it sometimes it just gets way too excessive for me. So um, yeah, I, there was just way too much reading for me. Uh, that was that usually happens to me at the very end of the game where I'm just like, okay, I already understand what they're doing or what they're saying. Let me just skip it. So, yeah, that was just way too much reading. Like as much fun as it was, when there's just too much reading, it's just like, okay, I just I just want to play the game. It, it doesn't really matter to me as to what the story is unless if there's voice acting for the cutscenes where I just sort of either skim it or just skip it entirely and it's like, eh, okay. So, yeah, like, there's not too many bad, the, the game's definitely a lot of fun considering the fact that there's so much to do, but, again, uh, definitely recommend this game whenever you get the chance of getting it, especially you love turn-based games. It's not just turn-based game, it's also an RPG, it's also a city, bu a city builder, it's also strategy, so there's a lot that you can find in this game. So uh, with that, I am done. Hopefully you guys had fun, and with that, peace out.